Roll Call from the United States of America. Stand by, Americans. Stand by, servicemen and women of the United Nations. Here's Mail Call, one big package of words and music and laughter delivered to you by the stars from whom you want to hear an answer to the request you send to Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. This mail call is dedicated to the sons and daughters of the state of Kentucky who are at the battlefronts throughout the world. And standing at the microphone now is the star the fighting Kentuckians have chosen to be their mistress of ceremonies, lovely Paulette Goddard. <laughs> Thank you, Don Wilson, and hi, a gang. You know, it's mighty sweet of you to invite me to take over the microphone to describe the running of this special Kentucky Radio Derby. And here are the entries as they're listed on the tote board. Number one, W.C. Fields of the Mint Julep Stable. Acting very frisky, but runs best on a wet track. Num <laughs> and number two, that famous entry, Charlie McCarthy of the Woodpecker Stable. And Mortimer Snurd with Edgar Bergen up. Number three, Virginia O'Brien of the Shamrock Farm, a very trim filly and in fine form. Number four, the Harmonica Rascals with Bora Minovich in the saddle. And number five, the King Sisters of the Harmony Stables. That's the lineup, ladies and gentlemen, and as these thoroughbreds step out onto the track, the band strikes up Kentucky. <laughs> I'll be going where the soft breeze is blowing in Kentucky. Things will be blooming when I roam where there's room in old Kentucky. Kentucky, where the sky is blue, and the grass is too, and the sunniest time of welcoming smile is made to order for you. Somebody's waiting to begin celebrating in Kentucky. Yee-hoo! I'm not denying that my heart will be flying when I get to Kentucky. I declare it's heaven with all those wonders shall know. Oh, Lord, make me lucky when I get to Kentucky. Let me stay there forevermore. Boys and girls, I know you're all anxious to hear from the entries. So first, here are the King sisters who have a slight complaint to register. It seems they want to tell the milkman to keep those bottles quiet. On a swing shift all night, turning out my quarter. All right, now I'm beat right down to the saw, and I've got to dig myself some nod. Milkman, keep those bottles quiet. Now the noise of the riveter, I don't mind it, cause the man with the whiskers has a lot behind it, but I can't keep punching with that victory crew when you're making me punch you with that bottle move. I wanna give my all if I'm gonna give a but I gotta get some shot eye if I'm gonna river. So bail out, but for that a in the garage, cause it is unpatriotic, it's a sabotage. Mr. Milkman, won't you keep those bottles quiet? Shh, 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 shh. 
been knocking out a fat tank all day. Yes, and I'm working on a bomber. Oh, okay, boy, you blast my wig with those clings. Clink, clink. I've got to get my party winks. Won't you remove your load, milkman? Take it from my abode, milkman. Why did you hit the road, milkman? Shove on, it's dawn. Give us all a real rest. Get lost with your seal test. Take your bottles and scram. Milkman! <laughs> Oh, nice going, King Sisters. And I'm sure those listening who've been awakened early in the morning, before they went to the service, of course, share in your complaint. And now, gang, meet several mouthfuls of music for Aminovich and his harmonica rascals. <laughs> Boraminovich and a pat on the back to your rascals for blowing their talents our way on this occasion. I don't know just how harmonicas fit into a Kentucky program unless it's because of their resemblance to corn on the cob. And believe me, they do some amazing things with corn squeezins in Kentucky. Anyhow, boys, you were great. Oh, Paulette, can I see you for a minute? Oh, Edgar Bergen. <laughs> Edgar, it's nice to see you. Well, thanks, Paulette. I hope you didn't forget to bring Charlie. After all, you know, he's a very famous son of Kentucky. That's right. Charles is a uh, genuine Kentucky oak. Um, <laughs> he'll be along shortly, Paulette. Uh, meanwhile, I'd like to have you say hello to another friend of mine, uh, uh, Mortimer Snurd. Uh, oh, Mortimer? I've heard of him. I'd love to meet him. Yes, well, come on out, Mortimer. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you. Hello, everybody. Hello, Miss Goddard. Hey. Hello, Mortimer. You. you know, I was just saying that I'd like to meet a man who's down to earth. You know, mm. someone who's really simple. Oh, uh, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got what it takes, haven't I? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Mortimer, come over here. Oh, I'm close enough. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, no, you're not. Come on over. I won't bite you. Oh, well, you won't. Uh, uh, I wish you would. Uh. <laughs> Oh, no, Mortimer, don't be afraid of me. Why, I just want to hold your hand. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, please. No, 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 please. Oh, pretty, please. Come on, hold my hand, sugar. No, I ain't going to do it. That's all he's doing. <laughs> well, why not? Why are you fooling around like that? <laughs> I'll hate myself in the morning, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I'll do. Mortimer, how can you be so stupid? Well, I got a priority. Oh, I... <laughs> well, Mortimer, haven't you ever been out with a girl? Well, I... Yeah, yeah, I... I had a date once, I did. Oh, where did you go? Well, I uh, just sat on the front porch, uh... Sat in the swing, too. <laughs> Boy, did we swing. Gosh. <laughs> oh, well, what else did you do? Well, uh, uh, now don't let this get around, will you? No. See? Well, you see, I looked at her, you know, and she looked at me, see? Yes, and then what? Well, shucks, ain't that enough for one night? She was... <laughs> Were you looking for me? Yes, Charlie, I was looking for you. What have I done now? Well, Mr. Fields, Mr. Fields will be here any minute. You mean old W.C.? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what you're going to do? I'm going to take a pop at... No, 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 no. No, sir, you're going to apologize to Mr. Fields for what you did. Well, what did Charlie do, Edgar? Tell him what you did. Well, I, uh... Oh, it was nothing, Paulette, I... I fractured him up a little bit. <laughs> yes. The idea of you rigging up a skunk trap yeah. in Mr. Fields' garden and then him tripping up over it. Yes. Uh, why, that sort of thing, it's skunk trap. Why, it's, it's a menace to society. It is? Yes. Since when is Fields society? Well, never mind. <laughs> There's no two ways about it, Charlie. You simply must apologize. Well, wh what am I going to say to Mr. Fields? Just say... I'm sorry about catching you in my skunk trap. It was a case of mistaken identity. No, no. No, no. no. You're not going to say that at all. No, but you must apologize. Yeah. Why, Charlie, it's up to you. It's up to you to, to hold out the olive branch to Mr. Fields. Well, what's the use? He'll only fall over it anyway. No. <laughs> Charlie, you should have respect for Mr. Fields. Why? Why, Mr. Fields is a very famous man. Yeah, well, he thinks he's pretty good, too, you know. You know, he thinks the whole world sort of revolves around him. Yes. And by golly, most of the time it does, too. <laughs> that guy can soak up more of that stuff. I... All right, please, please. Just stick a wick in him. Charlie. <laughs> There will be none of that. I doubt it. Yes, yes. <laughs> Nevertheless, Mr. Fields deserves an apology from you. Yes, sir. Because after all is said and done, he is an upright citizen. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. You get him upright and I'll apologize. <laughs> Well, boys and girls, while Charlie's getting his apology straightened out, here's one of your favorite vocalists, the girl with that slick trick voice, Virginia O'Brien. <laughs> Smell so sweet, it darn near makes you sick. I used to think my life was humdrum, but I sure have learned a lesson that is bound to stick. There ain't no use of me pretending. This city sure ain't no place for a gal like me to end in going back to where I come from, where the mockingbird is singing in the lilac bush. 
to go down to the station every evening just to watch the Pullman train come rolling in. And then one night, that great temptation got the best of me and drove me to a life of sin. I took my hat and fourteen dollars and went to all the troubles of this life that always follows when you're rich and hunting romance. But my hunting day. I met a man in Kansas City And he winked at me and asked me if I'd like to step around And I said, yep, that's what I'm here for So he said he'd take me to the hottest spots in town He mentioned things he'd have to fix up So he took my $14, but there must have been up he's been gone since Thursday evening and I got a hunch I'll see him on the road to Mandalay when I get old and gray but when I'm old and have a grandchild I can tell her about my romance and just watch her eyes bug out the chances are she won't believe me and she do the same darn thing when she's grown up no doubt, but she can't say I didn't warn her What'll happen if she meets up with that silly guy? Go darn him Hope you're all paying attention Because I'm going to ask questions later on I'm going back to where I come from Just to listen to the mockingbird sing And then the lilac book Virginia O'Brien, that was swell. Yeah, you know, Bergen, that song gave me an idea. If Fields is coming, I'm going back to where I came from before he gets here. Oh, no, no, you're not. No, you'd better stay right here, young man. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think I hear Mr. Fields coming now. Oh, yo, 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 no. <laughs> not yet, no. You, you sure? Yes, yes. Isn't that W.C. Fields right over there by the door? Is it? Yes, that's it. Well, can you see him? Well, I can't see him, but... I can see his nose in the door. His nose in the door, yeah. Oh, well, that's all right, then. It'll be another five minutes before he gets here. <laughs> Me, my books, and my buckles. He's got a saw with him, Bergen. A saw? He's got a saw. <laughs> Well, hello, Bill. Hello, Edgar. I uh, didn't know who had the first line. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I apologize, Bill. It was really your line, but uh, yeah. you didn't look like you were going to come through there. Yeah. <laughs> I was afraid uh, myself off of the car. Uh, looked like you've been uh, on that wet track, you know. <laughs> how are you? Oh, I'm pretty good, Bill. Very good. Um, where is that uh, little woodpecker's uh, snack bar? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to explain about Charlie. Uh, but first, I want you to meet Paulette Goddard, Bill. Oh, I'm charmed, lovely lady. Uh, this is a delight. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Fields, for those sweet words. Oh, don't mention that. <laughs> Think nothing of it. It's a poet in me. <laughs> well, to return or the... the... martini, you know. <laughs> I want to return the compliment. Believe me, it's a pleasure to welcome you, Kentucky's most famous colonel, to this mail call for the servicemen and women from Kentucky. Ah, wonderful state, Kentucky, filled with nostalgia. I think that's the right way to pronounce it. <laughs> they 
got educated school, brother. As I recall, it's meadows of blue grass, it's beautiful women, it's blooded racehorses, and it's excellent distillery. <laughs> Stuff is hard to get now. <laughs> Looks like I'll have to take up chemistry. <laughs> Back tomorrow, that. Now, until let's get back to Charlie. Well, now, don't get excited, Bill. You know, I, I, I told you that I'd, uh, that I'd explain everything about this thing, you know. And uh, then explain why your belligerent little bundling board perpetrated an act of sabotage <laughs> by stretching a wire across my garden path. Well, the whole thing was uh, perfectly innocent, Bill. You see, he was setting a skunk trap. Oh, a skunk trap. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> that covers everything. Nevertheless, the other evening, as I was traversing my garden in search of flora and fauna... Uh, page... Uh, <laughs> Walking along when I unexpectedly tripped, and the next thing I knew, I was prostrate on terra firma, which was not unusual in itself. <laughs> well, I, uh, the I circumstances would... were different. I yeah. got a line there. Yes, yes, I out of there. <laughs> You're doing so well, I've got to do something pretty soon yeah. here. <laughs> Yeah, I could have sent Mortimer down just as well, yeah. You want to read that part? <laughs> yeah. Well, Bill, I, uh, I've heard rumors that, uh, I've heard rumors that you've gone on the wagon. Ah, uh, the rumors, Edgar, are not all true. I'm half on the wagon. You're half on the wagon, uh-huh. Then you drink half as much? Yes, I've uh, cut out the chaser. <laughs> yeah, but once more, about this skunk trap, Bill. Oh, you mean Flora? No, uh, no, no. no. Uh, oh, I see what you mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, it was quite an experience. I broke my femur and fractured my decanter. Is that so? You know that... That sounds rather serious, Bill. Yes, it was. I was hurried to the hospital. Mm. I took a turn for the nurse. Yeah. <laughs> she says, you had it right the first time. Huh? These secretaries. <laughs> Boy, they're pips. Yeah. <laughs> Well, were you running a fever? No, but I had some trouble with my blood pressure. Rather high, huh? Ninety proof. Yes. <laughs> but a wonderful place, that hospital. They even had mattresses on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there again. Yeah, all right, Charlie. Come on in here. Is it okay? Yeah. Did you... Did you... Oh. Make him put that saw down. All right, now, now Charlie. Now, it's all right. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, this is like old days, isn't it, Bill, this carrying on? Yeah. Remember how we used to fight, Mr. Fields? Yeah. That was foolish, wasn't it, though? As it was, my yeah. little friend. Yeah. But we're above that sort of thing now. Yes. Oh, those were the good old days. Yes, they were. Remember the time I said I'd slice you into a Venetian blind? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That was a good one. That was, I think, a dollar. Uh, <laughs> oh, it was pretty good. It wasn't yeah, too Yeah, I cruddy. guess it's old now. Yeah. Oh, Remember how I topped you by saying that makes me shudder? <laughs> <laughs> I got that one in here. Yeah. yeah, you got it in. There it goes again. Yeah. You see, Edgar, it's no use. Well, Bill, it's only the mischief in the boy that makes him say those things. You know, Charlie uh, is his own worst enemy. Not while I'm around. <laughs> uh, listen, I did let go of my lap. Let go of my lap, Bergen. All right. I want to hang on on him. No, you're not right there. 
Now, stop this. Remember, Mr. Fields is not a well man. No? That's right, Edgar. I've been a fragile thing of beauty ever since I was born. <laughs> you weren't born. You were squeezed out of an old bar rag. No, <laughs> Many of you from the bluegrass have written in asking that we do a salute to old Kentucky, that we decided to put it right at the top of our GI slate. I'm not a native Kentuckian myself, but I've spent a lot of time in that corner of the country. There's a very soft spot in my heart for the land around Louisville and Lexington and Frankfurt, and out around Paducah, where the Ohio River is getting ready to flow into the Mississippi. But the bluegrass will keep on waving, and derby winners will keep on running for a good many years after the Axis has beat a retreat. So be of good cheer, ladies and gentlemen of Kentucky. The old state's waiting for you and wishing you good luck all along the line. That's it, gang. The end of another mail call letter. Signatures include W.C. Fields, Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, Mortimer Snurd, Virginia O'Brien, Bora Minovich, and the Harmonica Rascals, the King Sisters, and yours truly, Don Wilson. This program is arranged through the cooperation of the Hollywood Victory Committee. Another mail call will be coming your way the next time you hear... <laughs> mail call is produced by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Thank <laughs> you.